In the last five years, the English Channel has become a popular but dangerous passage for those seeking a new life in the UK. While many embark on this journey with hope, every boat ride also lines the pockets of those willing to exploit the desperation for personal gain. We like to think smugglers operate in the fringes of society or in dark corners of the internet. But the uncomfortable truth is, making contact with a criminal network whose trade is deadly trips across the channel is as easy as finding a place to eat. So a couple of weeks back, I went out on the channel to see the small boats crossing and quickly it became clear that there were a large number of these little dinghies packed, 10 person boats packed with maybe 70 people. So you can see large group, children in the middle, women on the front, massively overloaded, massively dangerous. So there's been a lot of focus on Albanian traffickers and Albanian trafficking routes and there's supposed to have been a big clampdown from the government on them. We wanted to find out whether they were still active. What we decided to do was dig into it a little bit more, find out who's putting the boats out there, how the people are getting on the boats and how it's all working. It didn't take long going through Instagram, TikTok to find a lot of accounts that would offer us transport um, from either Belgium or France to the UK, specifically targeting Albanian nationals. Uh, the kind of things that they were saying where they were when you get to the UK, you'll be put in detention, but then you'll just be released. So if you look at this, it's one a typical account. There's an advert there. This is about coming over to the UK. If you look, profile is the London Eye. They've got a couple of emojis of a boat and uh, a plane. Uh, we've sent the initial message, which is saying, we're very interested, can you tell me more? They've replied saying, uh, you can go by dinghy uh, and it costs three and a half thousand pounds per person. Uh, we put a cover story saying that it was going to be two adults, um, a woman, a brother-in-law and two teenagers, uh, one that was 12 and one that was 15. For that they offered 100% that you'll be able to get to the UK, um, that you go via Dunkirk and that the crossing takes just under three hours, trips happen daily. They explained a little bit also in terms of how it would work getting to Dunkirk. So it mean, what essentially they said was, if you travel to Brussels and then get a taxi from Brussels to Dunkirk, and that's where you could go to the pickup point where you could then end up getting on a dinghy. They were quite pushy. They kept asking, oh, are you ready to do this? When are you ready to go? So a lot of them were pretty open about the routes and the methods, but we wanted to go one step further and find out a bit more about the people behind the accounts. So using some translators, we made contact with them and actually had some phone conversations. During these phone calls, traffickers were willing to discuss the finer details of channel crossings, costs, times and locations, there was little off limit. But when they shared their telephone numbers, we were shocked to discover every single one was for a line registered in the UK. How does the journey go? How many people are there in a speedboat? I do not put more than 40 people. Okay. How many hours is the journey? Three. Three hours? I mean, calm sea or... I have a principle, I work less but I do it right. I don't depart them when the sea is above 0 0.7, I don't depart them every day and I don't depart more than 40 people at a time because I want to do it correctly. I don't want to get into animosity with people. I don't take uh, people from Albania uh, to take them to, to France because I don't want to have anything to do with Albania. But uh, you will get into water, brother, and I don't know what others have told you or how others have explained it to you because there are a lot of fraudsters who say that you will spend an hour on the road, you will spend an hour by car or I don't know what else. But you have to do an hour on foot, two hours, you have to stay all night in the forest there with the little children. The French police may come and deflate the boat or who knows what else could come up, these things happen. What we also were able to get is a little bit of insight
insight into the way that these groups work. So we found that it wasn't always the same person controlling the social media account as was organising the travel. So we'd make contact with an account and then be passed on to someone else who would arrange the transport or give us more details about it. One of the things that one person mentioned was that they were on a commission of 500 euros for every person that they got on a boat. So you get a sense of the scale in terms of how much money is passing through the different layers. And what we also found was we were quoted different prices. So one person came with 4K, one person came with 3.5. One of the ways that that's been explained to us is that depending on where the person is within the people trafficking or smuggling hierarchy, everyone's taking a cut. So the lower the price, the closer that you could be to the actual smuggler who's putting the whole operation together. One trafficker we spoke to was happy to take our custom and share details, but he was clear that we speak with only him and no one else. The departure day, when it's the departure day, one of my friends will go and pick them up. Uh, there and take there to the departure point. The departure will take place at 1, 2 or 3 a.m. midnight. But if you send them there by Monday, Monday is the best day because the weather is very good. From this moment you're gonna have to speak to me only, no one else. For everything, for money, for everything, you will speak to me only and no one else. This trafficker, like all the people smugglers we spoke to, called from a UK-based number and on the call indicated he was based in Britain. He told us he preferred the money to be transferred to Albania, but if not, he could collect it in England and send it back at a higher cost. I can reduce that uh, 7% of the papers because uh, the money is already in Albania. Or you can give it to me in England and I will uh, move them myself to Albania because I've got uh, people who do that. The trafficker was not seeking any down payment on the trip. The leverage he appeared to want was the identity of those travelling. Once he had this, the journey could be arranged. Now, uh, regarding the money, uh, we agreed. Do you need a document, a number or what do you need? I need passport pictures of the four people taking this journey. What about the money? Uh, regarding the money, once those four uh, cross the border, uh, you give me the money. But if I don't receive pictures of the passports, I cannot start this at all. I simply need to know who you are and then the money, you can give me the money after you cross. We often hear that unaccompanied children make the trip from Albania. So we asked a trafficker if he would be willing to take a 15-year-old boy whose family did not want him to go to England and would be unaware of his leaving. Now, my son has his friend. I know his family too. It's not a problem. Just send me his uh, passport picture and I take over everything. Don't worry. We shared our findings of the investigation with Meta and they informed us they had removed the Instagram accounts we found advertising people smuggling. TikTok, however, declined the opportunity to provide a comment. We approached the National Crime Agency, the law enforcement body charged with tackling human trafficking in the UK, who asked us to share our findings. An NCA spokesman added that, tackling organised immigration crime is a key priority for us. The NCA alone has more than 90 ongoing investigations into networks or individuals in the top tier of organised immigration crime or human trafficking, the highest harm. We also use the full suite of powers at our disposal to disrupt these networks, including through targeting their social media offering and their financial flows. The terrifying aspect of this undercover expose was not luring these dangerous individuals into revelations about their methods. It was the overwhelming evidence groups are embedded in the UK. All the traffickers called from UK-based telephone numbers and were keen to discuss setting up meetings with their operatives in England. These smugglers don't just hide in plain sight online. You might well have walked past one on a British high street. <laughs>